What is up, guys? Welcome back to another live episode of Doing It With Jason. Uh, today we're going to be talking about pocket screw holes, pocket screw jigs, such as the Craig jig, and uh, face frames. So, why do you use pocket screws? My number one reason is for face frames. So I have a cabinet right here behind me. This is a plywood cabinet. It's going to be for a vanity. Uh, it's just three-quarter plywood for my sides, top, bottom, everything. It's got a little cubby here. It's going to be for like toilet paper and all that good stuff, I'm guessing. So pretty much we have all these pieces. Let me show you the top view real quick. So we have this. This is our face frame. This is our styles and rails. So you measure everything out beforehand. Our styles are our longer ones. They're the ones that are going to be going up and down along the cabinet. And then our rails go left and right. Uh, so they'll be joining into it with a pocket screw. So if I show you here on the cabinet, pretty much when it's all together, it'll look like that would be a face frame part. This will be a face frame part right here. So that'll be a rail style. Uh, rail is going to be up here as well. And then rail down here. And then below my finger will be the uh, toe kick. So let's just get started talking about the Craig jig mini kit real quick just to kind of get you guys updated on what that is uh, this is the least expensive one I have the links in the comments or in the description uh, this kit will get you started it'll drill one hole at a time they have millions of different ones that they offer this one is really good and handy really quick uh, you'll need that and then you'll need a face frame clamp or just a face jig clamp whatever you want to call those uh, so now you'll get this you'll get a little stopper dealy here. What is up Paul pick present and accounted for? Well, look at that. Yeah, we're just doing a quick little tutorial on this stuff here uh, So yeah, you're gonna have your step drill bit wrong camera uh, Step drill bit which what it is is it allows for the pocket screw to go in and have a little place for it So it's really nice. So what I do is I uh, just set my little stopper because you don't want this to go all the way through so as you see it fits into here and if it didn't have that stopper, you would just keep on going to town and you will not make a pocket hole. Uh, you will make a pocket problem. So it, can, it comes with a little stopper and then it comes with a little Allen key right here to adjust and tighten it. Uh, the easiest way I find is either with a penny, a nickel, a dime, something. You want to stop the bit flush with the bottom of the penny that's flush with this. So what you could do is just stand it up. I know it's probably going to be hard to see. Uh, I put the penny down onto my table surface have this all set up hold it you know very you know as, as good as you can and then tighten that allen head up and that will give you your depth stop for three quarter plywood and uh gets you rolling so what will happen is this will not go all the way through it'll stop right here with the drill and yeah so my face frames are built out of inch and a half uh solid wood these are maple right here so for my styles i will not be drilling those so we're just going to set those aside uh, rails I will be putting two because these are inch and a half each wide so I like to put at least two on those and that's two is plenty uh, on each one to connect so what I do is after I cut them to length uh, you will flip them over and get your bad side and as you can see some of these are really funky but that is okay for what we're doing today uh, this is a paint grade piece you're then gonna take your jig and uh, it's really really easy you just set it you know I like to just offset it a little bit flush this side of it right here. You see you have the whole part right here where the, I'll show you guys, the drill bit goes through and it's gonna make our hole. So I just get that part, you know, on the outside, this is where it's actually gonna attach on this side to my styles, uh, which will be the up and down section. And unfortunately I can't move this to make it easy on myself. So we're just gonna, you know, keep it in focus here on the camera somewhat. And I like to use these little, uh, these clamps. You could use any kind of clamps for this, you know, your little Harbor Freight clamps whatnot, use them all. Uh, the face frame jig clamps work pretty well for this as long as you tighten them down pretty well. And then you're gonna wanna drill for this. You're not gonna want, uh, you, you really want a, a, not a battery operated one. They, uh, I know they used to recommend, I don't know if they still do nowadays. Uh, but a corded drill works much better. You wanna really take your time. Cause if you can see that tip right there gets really skinny, those break, oh, thanks for the tip. This is a great tip right here. Uh, this tip on this drill is not so great. You have to be really, really careful with it. Don't drop it. Don't start it inside of the jig ahead of time. Don't go and then shove it in. You will break this tip faster than you can break any tip. Uh, and these do come with the jig in the whole setup. I think it's like right around nineteen ninety nine or something like that. They sell these separate for about fourteen ninety nine, I believe, for this just the drill bit. So that's why I might as well when I break a drill bit, I just go buy a whole other mini jig kit 
give it to my kids, let them play with it, you know, do whatever. So do not start it until it's in there and you want to just make sure it's, you know, it's freely in there. You want to have some, a little play like that. Uh, I don't know if you could see. You do not want to just go go to town because you will crack that sucker so quick. So then you just go and then don't put too much force, you know, just go nice and slow. Uh, let it do all the work for you. Sorry if it's a little loud. And then that drill bit is going to stop with the stopper like it just did. You pull it out, then you turn it off, and then it made a nice little dust right here. And then you pop your clamp off and shake it off, and boom, you have a pocket hole. So it's as easy as that, and all for like 20 bucks plus whatever this costs. You too could be making your own face frames. You could do this with all kinds of things. You could attach uh, plywood to uh, plywood, you know, you could use it for all kinds of joinery. Uh, and the, the trick is, is the screws. It's all about the screws as well, since we're just on this topic of the joinery. I like the square head, so it's hard to tell right here, but you get a square head bit for your drill bit, or for your screw gun. Uh, not the Phillips, the Phillips tend to, when you're starting to join these together and you slip, Phillips seem to strip out easier. Uh, you can go right through your hand, you know, especially if you're not careful. Uh, so square tip is number one, and then number two is fine. You'll see two options. You'll see coarse and fine, and all these are uh, inch and a quarter length uh, for when you're doing three quarter face frames. So. Uh, fine is going to be what you're going to want for all your harder woods like you know maple oak all that stuff if you're doing plywood or maybe a really really soft pine they're going to sell the coarse uh, uh, screw <coughs> sorry uh, so they're going to have the coarse uh, screw for the pine the softer woods and plywood so it, when you're not too sure and the wood feels hard use the fine tip because these will split out very quickly uh, and you have issues even trying to get it in there and all that good stuff. So you did one, and now on that same one, so, it, so when I'm joining it, I don't want it to be twisting on me or anything once I get it all going. So I'll put one directly next to it, the same deal. Screw, uh, the drill part is on the inside, and then you're going to the flat part, the flushed out on the outside, and then you just clamp it up. With, and then these will come in handy. You won't, this isn't the only reason you'll use these clamps. You also use these clamps for attaching the face frame, which I'll do one of those real quick for you guys, just to kind of give you a, a start to finish on that so like I said just get it in there make sure it's nice and loose uh, as you can see and then you turn it on and you can clamp this down whatever makes you feel better you can do this sideways clamp it to the table you don't have to go up and down like I'm doing uh, I just have a right angle drill and it you know for reasons of mother nature it's easier to push down like that uh, what you could do is clamp it to your table like this especially if you had a normal drill and then just go right to town in there all right, so we got that one all done, and then boom, we have two of those on one side. So I will repeat the same process you know, to the other side of my rail because it's gonna be rail to rail to style. Uh, hello, Brick Attack, and hello, everybody. Uh, so yeah, so then that one's ready. So that is pretty much as simple as can be. Now, instead of just going, you know, boring you guys to death, I'm just gonna attach this real quick to a uh, style and show you how the connection is made that back in there <clears throat> so same idea everything you're always working backwards and everything's upside down so you know this is my good side uh, you'll know that because you'll see the tear out or you could uh, always write an X on it you know after you cut it on your uh, chop saw you know you'll know good side up so then good side goes down and then we'll be uh, joining this to our face frame to get the whole thing started and so what I do is of course type on three is my favorite you're gonna just put it on the end of the, the rail piece and it doesn't take too, too much. Uh, I like to overdo it a lot of times, but you know, it's, it's a pretty good, you definitely want the glue though, uh, because the pocket screws are only so much holding power, the glue is gonna really help as well. So, we're just gonna do that. Uh, and then that's pretty much that. Wipe your fingers on some pants, and then you're gonna line these up. Now, I had this set up to take over the thickness of this jig plus the wood. So these come, you know, really easy. You just twist these until it feels nice and tight, and uh, you just test it. I really like over tightening it because I notice these things move a lot. Uh, so you don't have to go too crazy, but the idea is you want it to be really tight right here for this joint. I don't know if you guys can see it, uh, because when you're putting that screw in, and actually I'm gonna put it a little tighter because that was a little loose. Uh, you just line it up like that, and then the reason you want to put this on here is because there's a slight angle on these pocket screws uh, of the jig. Obviously, you can't get a screw straight in there. Uh, if you can get a screw straight in there, no big deal. But these screws are naturally, you can see the angle on this, they're naturally going to have that you know, nice little degree angle. 
not sure what it is, maybe a 15, 20 degree angle, somewhere around there. So that screw is gonna go into uh, the wood at an angle and wanna push these pieces at a different level. So always, always tighten this as much as you can. Flush out wherever you're doing or make your marks. Uh, square tip, you gotta use the longer ones. Uh, that way it doesn't get in the way of everything because then you have issues. These longer, I believe this is like six inch or whatnot, a tip, you'll want one of those. It does not come with the mini jig uh, kit, I don't believe. It just comes with the uh, screw or you know the drill bit and all that stuff. So then you will go, and then you can clamp this to the table, especially if you're worried about slipping and hitting your hand. Uh, and this is a ratcheting one, so it's gonna be a little noisy. And then that sucks it up. And then I kind of, depending, I'll like lean a little bit more to the one I'm at. You could do this in one swip you know, one quick motion if you want to just clamp it right in the middle. But you know, OCD like that. And that is it. Don't over tighten them. You will strip them out. You pop this open. The way this thing works too uh, is when it locks down, it's got a little flap here. It's got this little rubber part to save your hands. Uh, this gets tight right here when you're squeezing whatever you're squeezing. This pops out. So then when you want to release it, you basically just squeeze this. So it's all just one motion. Uh, say I'm on to my finger really tight. I just kind of flip that right there and it releases that, releases the jig, and you're good to go. And then now you'll just grab it. Uh, it usually is pretty close to level depending on how thick your pieces are. And then we'll bring it back around and you can see this is our rail and style. So this will be exactly how this cabinet's laid out. And that will go like that. I'll attach that to the actual cabinet. This one I'm going to be attaching once the face frame is all completed. I'll be attaching it with just glue and nails uh, and clamp. <clears throat> because it is gonna be paint grade but if it was stain grade and you're really worried maybe uh, you know you didn't mind seeing some pocket holes here you could actually put some pocket holes on the inside as well uh, screw that clamp that and that way you have no holes no nails anything like that uh, but yeah so I just wanted to jump on and show you guys I have to do this anyway so hey might as well have done that so be sure uh, as always to subscribe and all that good stuff to the channel I had a button for that but I don't know where it is uh, yeah so wait let me see I might have one I might have one here it is. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow us all over the world. You know, the right there, right there, right there. You guys have a terrific day. We'll see.